Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. It's not just the central banks that are buying gold. Let's explore! Indeed. We are hearing more and more about central banks around the world stockpiling the yellow metal, such as you see here, Vladimir Putin holding a nice chunky gold bar, presumably a good delivery bar, which weighs 400 ounces. That's 27 pounds of gold in his hands. Most of us can't afford to buy gold in that amount, I mean, let alone uh, half of that size. But nonetheless, that's what central banks are doing around the world, accumulating more gold bars. And so, therefore, it's probably incumbent upon us to do what the central banks do. We can become our own central bank. And that's precisely what people are doing, especially in Russia right now. Yes, indeed, the Russian people are accumulating uh, more gold there's an article here we're going to be looking at from Kitco that talks about this. Russians are going on a gold buying spree. Russian nationals have bought a record amount of gold since 2014. And if we go back in time, 2014 is coming off the highs that we saw gold just a few years earlier. And uh, people were nervous. It's around that time when we did the third round of quantitative easing. We kind of slipped by the seat of our pants at that time because all nations around the world, well, they have currencies that they print. Ad nauseum, they just keep printing and printing and printing. And all of the nations of the world have uh, the only thing that backs those currencies is government decree. Hence the term fiat currency. And fiat currencies ultimately fail. And failure of fiat currencies means that something's got to replace them. And right now, they're working on that replacement, and that replacement is essentially some sort of a currency reset. There's several different versions of what that could look like, but the serious proposals have, have been brought forth, and most of them will probably center around some sort of agenda, such as social credits, ESG, is what they are talk about, environmental, sustainable, and governance of some sort. And that is something that is... A little bit troubling, especially when they can push an agenda through the monetary system. But this thing will be backed by some sort of um, a blockchain or a ledger system that could be essentially controlled by the IMF under one proposal. That's a little scary, where you may have individual currencies uh, issued around the world, but all of them tied to some sort of a global ledger system. Even if it's a national ledger system, like some think that FedCoin will be, central bank digital currencies are the future. And I think that's why you're starting to see people run to the safety of gold, which is anonymous, but holds quite a bit of wealth in a small package. And so Sputnik has reported this, that Russian nationals have bought this record amount of gold uh, since that 2014 they bought four tons of gold bullion and coins in the past nine months. That's about 8% more when compared to the previous year, according to this report. Traditional gold investments have become very popular in other countries as well, with the Americans having purchased 91.3 tons of the yellow metal in the past nine months. That's up almost 80%, folks. It's pretty amazing. Wow. In China and India, gold buying has surged 54% and 24% respectively. Now, keep in mind, China and India are already hot when it comes to buying gold. The citizens of those countries buy gold on a regular basis as part of their culture. And part of that culture is about having a sense of wealth and uh, to be able to save yourselves in case of economic instability in those countries, which we've seen before. The largest difference between the amount of gold purchased can be put down to a 20% value-added tax rate on gold bullion in Russia, which is the highest VAT in the world. The Russian authorities have been considering a bill to cancel VAT on gold investments recently as part of a broader program to support domestic gold demand. 
according to the latest reports, they will go ahead with this plan starting in 2022. Now, that is interesting. Uh, some experts and officials have been sounding alarms regarding potential budget losses for Russia once this bill is approved and about the risk of the country running out of gold. That is quite an interesting scenario uh, that this could even would even be uh, considered, much less allowed as the bill to go through. Gold is currently stuck in a very high consolidate, very heavy consolidation pattern. The price is only 0.3% higher on the session, but has been hovering around $1,787 an ounce for the around 14 sessions. And there are some key central bank events that could get the markets moving this week. We know that the market is looking for to gather information about how the new Omicron COVID-19 variant could hinder plans. In fact, I even heard today that it's not as transmissible as the regular alpha variant or the uh, delta variant. You hear so many different things about this. And um, so it's hard to say. The science shifts, the news shifts, um, things get hyped up. And what we talk about on this channel is how it affects the, um, the markets. The markets get spooked over things like this, whether things are true or not. And that is the key that we're talking about here. Uh, the Fed has been aggressive in comparison to the European Central Bank. Some Fed members are looking for a further reduction in quantitative easing and even interest rate rises by the summer of next year. This could give us some more information about the trajectory of this plan. The next FOMC meeting will be on the 15th. That's this Wednesday, just a few days from right now. Luckily, by Thursday, we'll have an idea of what's going on. And if we look at the markets here, uh, these prices are considered lower uh, than what people think, uh, or lower than, um, than what was kind of, I guess, bargained for considering where we're at with inflation. And so people are taking advantage in nations around the world, including us here. Gold tends to have a lower premium compared to silver. And it is quite intriguing to see that Americans, almost 80% of them bought more gold. We're concerned, rightfully so. I think that's a good sign. I think that means that people are really wising up about what's going on in the world today. And looking at the markets as a side note, looky here, folks. By every scenario, including bid and ask price, it is now official that gold is above palladium in price. Palladium dropped almost 4.5% today, down $76. So gold is now higher than palladium right now. Pretty amazing to think about, uh, even in the ask price. Platinum took a pretty big hit today too, but silver and gold are consolidating or coming, you know, correcting to a degree from what happened last week. But both metals, especially silver, is still down dramatically. We still have an 80 to 1 gold to silver ratio. But it's not deterring Russians. I'll be very interested to see if Russians or other nationalities, what their views or how much silver bullion they've been stacking. That would be an interesting scenario to find out. But gold is being stockpiled. Uh, by the people of Russia in spite of a high VAT, the value-added tax. We'll see where it goes from here. Very interesting news indeed. And uh, I don't have any Russian bullion. This is a Russian bullion coin. I don't have any of these, but it would be kind of neat to have one just as part of the collection. You don't see it very often here. There are some European bullion coins, modern bullion coins, minted each year that uh, kind of escape, uh, escape the American market. They don't make their ways. Others like the Philharmonics are widely available. They have those distribution channels. Russia is not a part of that distribution channel. China is, though. We know about the Chinese pandas. We know about other the Armenian coins as well, too, the Noah's Ark. I think it's a matter of what mint produces them, and it may be that the mint of um, the Moscow mint, perhaps, I don't know what the name of it is, produces these, and they don't have distribution channels outside of their purview. That's all right. Russian people only need to buy it from within country. And there you have it. A fascinating story, I think, as it's not just about Russia, but it's about America, too. More and more people are buying gold. 
I think that's a good thing. I believe the more people that have real sound money in their possession is definitely a good thing. And if you haven't had a chance to check out, if you think, well, this is not for me, I'm a pure silver stacker and I can't afford to buy gold, you really should check out my video entitled The Easiest Way to Buy Gold and The Hardest Way to Buy Gold. That's a paraphrase of the title. But I talk about ways that you can buy gold, very tiny amount of gold, for not a whole lot over spot. <clears throat> I got a pretty good deal on a coin um, in, in a recent purchase. And uh, I think it's probably the best way and the easiest way and the cheapest way to buy gold, especially if you're on a tight budget and if you are stacking silver and have been nervous about getting into gold because of the large chunk of change you would need to be in order to do so. Doesn't need to be that way. There's a way to do it. And so um, I think it's encouraging. It's fascinating to see more gold buyers out there uh, in the world and especially here in America, 80%. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to listen to this next part because I'm going to go back to it. This is something I really, truly mean. Please rate this video. Give it a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. I'd appreciate it. Share it with the community. Comment. Hello. Hello. This is Jay. Hello, Jay. We got a scammer we're going to take. Hello. Nope. Oh, he's out of here. So rate it. Share the video. Comment on the video. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are. And subscribe.